If you're an artist, sometimes it's not your medium that you use or even how good you are at it, it's what you make with your talent. Case in point, a wood turner that Al Vex met in Somerset, Kentucky. Now he makes the traditional wood pieces, but it's his main attraction you have to tip your hat to. As you can see, Chris Ramsey is a wood turner. This scene is fairly typical of scenes we have seen in the workshops of other wood turners. All of these artists utilize the same basic tools, about the only difference in what they create lies solely in their respective creative talents. So if that be the case, what brings us to the Somerset, Kentucky studios of Chris Ramsey? Well, Chris has found a niche in the world of wood turning that sets him apart from all the others. However, as most of the others, he started with a hobby that took over. Well, I actually started uh, turning in October of 97. Uh, I'm an identical twin and my twin brother showed up at the door one day and he was ranting and raving about how fun wood turn turning is and how it captivates you. And uh, for a birthday present, he showed up with a lathe and that started this whole thing. I took wood shop in high school and never messed with wood after that um, until my brother showed up with the lathe and uh, he was right, uh, it's, it's, it's addictive. It's, um, you can take a piece of wood that's gonna go in a fireplace or in a landfill somewhere and make something beautiful out of it and it's, uh, it's instant gratification. Basically, Chris followed the path of most wood turners, but we mentioned he found a niche that set him apart from the others. You see, Chris got into the hat making business. Whether by design or accident, he found a new ticket. My wife wanted a flat bottom bowl with uh, a flange on it, about an eight inch flange on it. So I made this, what I thought she wanted, and I made it out of walnut. And uh, as it dried, it ovaled a little bit, as straight grain wood will do. And I was sitting there sanding on it, and I looked at it and I thought, it kind of looks like a hat. And so then I started trying to make hats. I select a log that is um, what would be considered a veneer quality log for the gallery quality hats. Now, some people like knots and blemishes in it, um, but uh, most of the hats that I'm making are clear, what would be considered a veneer grade log. And uh, I need a log about 16 to 18 inches across. The bigger the log, the better. The wood has to be green. I take and I, I half the log, and I take a compass and I depending on the size of the brim, I uh, score a line around it and I trim it up with a chainsaw. And then I put it on the lathe and that becomes the brim of the hat. Um, the technique that, that I have found um, is called thin wall turning and um, it takes a certain grind and a certain tool to do it and I use light to guide me. Um, to see how thick or how thin I am. And um, it takes a very light touch, a very light cut, and uh, a pretty steady hand. Because one little slip, you know, when you start getting down to a sixteenth of an inch, one little slip, uh, it's all over and you start again. You use a lot of light for your measurement. Is, does that help you out rather than your calipers? Oh, absolutely. Um, when you get a, a nice piece of wood, um, the light helps me gauge the thickness. I'll turn it down to a, a certain thickness and measure it with the caliper to get going. And then I can follow the color of light that's coming through that particular spot as thick as I want it. I can follow that same light pattern all the way through the piece of wood and I'll have to use the calipers and just use the light as a guide. People ask if the band is a different kind of wood. Technically, no. Um, it's the burnishing process. Burnishing is when you take, uh, I use ebony and woods like Purple Heart, Paduke, Cocobolo, uh, the exotic imported woods. And as the, the hat is on the lathe and it's spinning, I apply pressure with an exotic piece of wood and it burns the color of the piece of wood I'm holding into uh, the hats, uh, which gives it um, a look of an attached hat band, but it's all the same piece of wood. 
How do you get the shape? Anything you turn on a lathe is going to be round. So I take it off the lathe after it's uh, sanded and turned, um, and I place it in what I call a, a bender. All it does is apply pressure to the sides of the hats. It squeezes it from round to oval. And I use rubber bands on a cowboy hat to drape around because it's pretty much flat. It's got a little profile to it. And I put the rubber bands on it, and as the wood dries, there's a little drop of water in each cell. And as that drop of water is evaporating and the wood is drying, that's when the bend will occur. So if you give it constant pressure, it'll do what you want it to do. Are these decorative or functional? Well, many of them are just displayed, but since they weigh only between 7 and 13 ounces, they can easily be worn, and a lot of them are. In fact, Chris is hoping one of them will be worn in Texas pretty soon. I've made hats for uh, several of the country music people, and uh, I've also made some hats for uh, Christy Todd Whitman as well as uh, George W. Bush. And, uh, I hopefully will be able to present it to him in person, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm not sure that you can compare this with building a better mousetrap, but Chris certainly has found a better way for people to recognize his creative talents. And it does go to show that a person can have fun by utilizing new methods, new techniques in doing the same old thing, and be successful at it. I couldn't think of anything that I would want to do more than what I'm doing. Um, it, it captivates me. It's instant gratification. Um, when I see someone on TV that has a hat or, you know, someone somewhere that has a hat or any one of my um, pieces, it really makes you feel good that other people want what you're creating. It's, it's really neat to walk into a gallery where I have some of my artwork and don't say anything to anybody. Just walk in and watch people when they see them. Um, they're usually the highlight of the gallery. 